Hello, my friends, and welcome back to my channel. So today I am filming a book tag, and this book tag is one that I wanted to do last year. It's the end of the year book tag, but there's a question in here that is specific about fall, and I thought this was a December book tag because last year was my first year doing booktube, so I I'm ready to do it now. I'm very excited because I love these like end of the year check-ins, like what you've read, what you want to read, and I just I think they're so fun. The uh, the middle of the year one, the mid book mid year book forget tag. That's like one of my favorite videos to watch. I love seeing that. So I thought we do this today. I think it's gonna be really fun. So there are a list of questions. I will have those down in the description. If you are a booktuber or a book blogger and you want to do these, feel free to take them. I did not make this video up. But anyway, we're going to get started. So this is the end of the year book tag, and we're going to talk about what I've read, what I want to read, and stuff like that. So let's get into it. So the first question is, are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? <laughs> yeah, right now on my Goodreads shelf, I have seven books that I'm currently reading, and some of those I'm like actively in the middle of, you know, like I kind of always have one audiobook, I usually have one like physical book, like a paperback, and then sometimes I'll have like several ebooks reading, usually they're arcs or something like that. But I also have a few books on there that I started that I just haven't finished, like they either didn't fit into my TBR at the time or something like that. Like I'm still interested in these books, I just haven't finished them yet and I need to. So these are books that I definitely want to read before the end of the year. One of them is Lessons in Sin by Pam Godwin. I really am enjoying this book. It is definitely different than the other books that I've read from her so far in that it doesn't really... I mean, I think I'm about halfway through and I'm liking it a lot, but it definitely goes more onto the taboo nature than the dark side of Pam's books. And I think that for me, Pam really shines with her dark romance and really getting gritty and exploring those topics. So I'm not hating it, but I'm also not as invested in this as I have been in her other books. So that's kind of why like <laughs> it just kind of got pushed aside. It's not that I don't like it, and I imagine that it's going to at least be a four-star read for me, but it's just some one of those books that I was like, um, it's not really captivating me right now. I'm going to try something else. And you know, when you do that and then you like don't get back to it for like ever, that's what's happening here. Okay. So another one is Ruthless Creatures. Now I know this book is extremely popular and extremely well loved. And this is another example of that exact thing happening where I started it. I really got into it. And then sometimes I just don't have a lot of time to read ebooks. And I know there is an audiobook available for this and I might just have to break down and buy it to finish this book because I am interested in it. This is a mafia romance. I really love the setup. I really love the hero and the heroine. And I specifically want to read this so I can get on to the next book because I've heard some of my friends tell me they think that will be my favorite. So that is something that I definitely want to finish. Ruthless Creatures, I definitely want to finish. I've heard nothing but great things about it. So Another book that I actually just barely started is Under the Whispering Door by T.J. Klune. This is his newest release. This is, I believe this is just an adult fantasy. I think that there is probably an M.M. romance in here too, because T.J. Klune loves to, I mean, he is a queer man and he does a great job at telling queer love stories. And so I definitely, definitely want to read this. I started this and then um, I felt like maybe... I wasn't in the right headspace for it because it does come with a pretty solid trigger warning in the beginning that it deals with a lot of different types of deaths and I'm actually going to read it to you because I thought it was so beautiful so if you don't even want to hear the trigger warning just mute me for a second okay but he said author's note this story explores life and love as well as loss and grief there are discussions of death in different forms quiet unexpected and death by suicide please read with care and I love that that was included in here. The books just fell off my lap. I love that that was included in here. And when I started it, I was I was so ready for it. And then as I, I started reading it, and like I'm only a couple of chapters in at this point, it started to um, feel like maybe this wasn't a great time for me to read this. And so I think I will, I, I know I will come back to this. I definitely want to finish this by the end of the year for sure. Okay, some other books that I definitely have started that I want to finish. So this one isn't technically... Okay, this is a kind of... This is this is a tricky one. So this is Pam Godwin's Her Deliver series. This is the second bind-up. So that one includes three different books. 
I have read the first book, but I still have the second two to finish. So that is Take and Manipulate. And I am definitely going to be reading these by the end of the year. I want to finish this complete series. So that means I need to read these two. And then there's another three book bind up after that. So I haven't started Take, which is the next book, but I definitely, definitely want to. So those are for sure going to be finished by the end of the year. Okay, and another book that I have started, that I have started on audio and just have kind of been picking away at it here and there, is Burn For Me by Ilona Andrews. I started this and I didn't tell anybody about it. I didn't even put it on my Goodreads TBR because <laughs> it took me a little while to get into it in the beginning. I don't, I'm listening to the audio, I don't necessarily love the audiobook narrator, and there were so many moving pieces and different characters in the beginning that I had to like rewind it and listen to it several times. So I definitely, definitely will be finishing this because I am finally at the point where things are making sense and I'm invested and I want to finish this. This is going to happen by the end of the year for sure. I definitely, I want to get on board with this story. I want to fangirl about it with Jessen and everybody else who loves it. I really love this author duo's writing and I just, I just need to finish it. So that's happening. Okay, the second question is, do you have an autumnal book to transition to the end of the year? I think I said that right. <laughs> I don't necessarily have a specific book, but I do have like book bookish feelings that I'm looking for, like a reading experience feeling that I'm looking for. And that's always something that's kind of a little haunting, a little eerie, a little um, other maybe, you know, just something that's kind of different. And so usually what I reach for is paranormal romance. And this year I started that by rereading the Night Hunter series. I read the first, I reread the first two books. This was a series that I read probably over 10 years ago. I think maybe not over 10 years ago, but I do remember reading this probably around like 2011, 2012, somewhere like that. This series, I think I read like the first four or five books, whatever was published at that time. And I want to continue reading this. This is book three, I believe. Yeah, this is book three. And I want to finish this and reread the series and get caught up so I can go into her spinoff series. So this is a book that I'm planning to continue on this year, this fall, for sure, this autumn season, since yesterday was actually the first day of fall. But another series that always makes me feel of autumn since last year, since it was the first year that I read it, was is Immortals After Dark. I love this series. I haven't finished it yet, but I first read this book last year around this time and just fell in love with it. Just adored it. Honestly, loved it so much. So I really would like to go back and reread this, but I also want to just finish the series. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but this series is back on my radar officially since it's fall and I'm in a big paranormal romance mood. <laughs> Okay, the next question is, is there a new release that you are still waiting for for the end of the year? And I have a couple. One of them is um, Curse of Darkness by Beck McMaster. This is her Promise of Darkness series, which is a fae adult fantasy romance series. I loved and adored the first two books when I read them earlier this year. And I've been waiting for this book. This is independently published and she's kind of been pushing the release date back a little bit. So I'm anxiously awaiting for this. This comes out in November as of right now, and I'm really hoping that it doesn't get pushed back more because I want to read it so badly. And it is, did I tell you the title? I can't remember if I told you the title. The title is Curse of Darkness. So this is the third book. I really want to read this. I will probably just marathon it as soon as it comes out. That's my hope. That's my plan. Okay. Another book that I definitely am going to read are the two books that are going to be released by the end of the year in the Necessary Evil series by Onley James. One of them comes out in October, that is Moonstruck, and the other one comes out in December, and that is Headcase. These are MM romances with a group of psychopathic murderers who are like vigilante killers, and they go and get the bad guys that maybe like the authorities miss, and it is their romances and love stories. I adore these books so much. Book one and two are some of my favorite, most fun, enjoyable, swoony reads of the year, and I am dying for more of the series. So those two, I'm I'm so anxiously awaiting those two. Another book that I'm wanting that I'm, I'm like not on quite the edge of my seat for, but is definitely high on my radar is Carrie Ann Cole's latest release. This is the second book, and I think it's like her Tomorrow series. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it is Wish of My Heart. I adore this cover. It is one of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen. I have very high expectations for this because I have loved the books that I have read by Carrie Ann Cole so far. Okay, the next question is, what are three books that you want to read by the end of the year? So <laughs> I have so many books that I want to read by the end of the year, but I did, I did limit this to three 
So you should be proud of me that I didn't pick more books because it said three and I only picked three, but that's largely because I couldn't narrow it down. But for sure, these three books I have to read by the end of the year. And one of them is A Touch of Stone and Snow. This is the second book in the Gathering of Dragons series. This is an adult fantasy romance. The first book in the series, A Heart of Blood and Ashes, is one of my all-time favorite books. I think it is the gold standard for fantasy romance. I love that book with my whole heart and soul. It was one of my favorite books of the year last year. I have not finished carrying on in the series like I do because I love that book so much and I get anxious about how the second book's gonna hold up, but I definitely want to read this because I think book three will be coming out next year, hopefully, fingers crossed. So I definitely want to read this. This is adult fantasy romance. This is like a barbarian romance and I believe there's a giant like snow leopard in here. I'm very excited about that. Another book that I am going to read this year for sure is Lothair by Chrisley Cole. This is part of the Immortals After Dark series. This is the book I fit I am on to finish the series. I have not finished it. I started it in audio and I love these audiobooks. Like Robert Petkoff is one of the best audiobook narrators I've ever heard in my life. But for some reason I was in one of those moods where I just wasn't paying attention and I had to keep rewinding it and so I was like okay I'm gonna put this aside for a while until I'm fully in the mood to enjoy it and I feel like that time is now. I have heard nothing but amazing things about this book. I am really dying to get into it and it's a nice thick boy. Look at how nice and floppy this book is. Like maybe I should just read it physically but I definitely want to read this by the end of the year. And the last book may surprise you but this book I'm gonna read by the end of the year. I want to read this so badly. It's been on several of my TBRs. I have actually even started it once and now I need to finish it. And it is Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. I know that Jessen loves this book so much and I wanna read it too because I love a good, beautiful fantasy story with some romantic elements and I am just really in the mood for a deliciously beautiful fantasy. So this one is yet happening this year. Okay, and the next question is, is there a book you think could still shock you and become a favorite of the year? And I think absolutely, honestly. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things about reading and I feel like that happens to me usually once a month when I find a book and I'm just like blown away and I'm like at least once a month and I'm like, wow, this is a new favorite. So here are some books that I think could be that way for me. I'm gonna talk to you about them real quick. The first one is Take by Pam Godwin. I have a very, very high expectation and a lot of hopes that this book is going to blow me away and is probably going to be one of my favorites in the series. I know that the hero in this book is the villain in previous books and I tell you what, I absolutely adore what Pam did with her previous villain in the series and I have very high expectations that I will feel have those same type of feelings about this hero, so anti-hero, I'm really hopeful. I think this one could definitely blow me away and be a new favorite. Another book is Sinner by Sierra Simone. I have very high expectations. I'm going to love this. It's going to be a new favorite. I've heard from several people that they actually like this more than Priest and that to me is going to be quite a lot because Priest is like way up here on my list of favorites. I adore that book so much. So I hope this one will be a new favorite. Is it going to eclipse my love for Priest? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Another book, well this is actually four books. I think four books in this series have the potential to be a new favorite and that is the remaining four books in Elisa Braden's Rescue from Ruin series. I'm just going to put the first book in that series right here. I have read I believe up to book six in this series and I think there are nine or ten out right now. Wait, nine? Yeah, no, ten. I think there's, I don't know. <laughs> I've read six. I have four left, not including novellas, so I guess that's ten, right? <laughs> yeah, that's ten. That's how math works. But I have loved, like, so many of these books that Elisa Braden has written. I've read eight of her books total that she's written so far, and a lot of those have become new favorites, so I have high expectations that at least one of the remaining four in the series will be a new favorite for me. I have high hopes for that. Okay, and then I also believe that one of these two or both could become a new favorite. These are the remaining two books in the Hathaway series by Lisa Kleypas that I have to read. I have loved and adored this series so much and I have very high expectations that one of these will be a new favorite. I have high hopes. I have high hopes because I love Lisa Kleypas and it wouldn't surprise me at all if one of those became a new favorite. I just need to read them first. So I actually specifically think that this one, Leo, I think I might love this one. I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope. <laughs> 
Okay, and then there are a two on two on here that I actually have never talked about, but I still have them on my radar. They're books that I really want to read, and I believe these two could be high, could be new favorites for me. I really believe that. So one of them is Evil Twin by Katie Wilde. Now, Katie Wilde wrote one of my favorite fantasy romance novellas, and I think y'all know how I feel about novellas. I really don't like them very much, but the the Mail Order Midwinter Bride by Katie Wilde was one of my favorite books last year. It was a complete delight. I loved, loved, loved that fantasy romance. I thought it was fantastic. I know that she came out with this one just recently, Evil Twin. It's another fantasy romance, and I believe it has sort of like a villainous hero, so I am extremely excited to read this one. I think this one could become a new favorite for me, for sure. And another book that I think could go either way, it could be a new favorite, or it could completely bomb for me, but because Pam Godwin loves this book and it influenced her writing so much, I really want to give this a shot and see how I feel about it, and it is Kushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey. This is, I believe, an adult fantasy, not necessarily a romance, but I, I know that this has some really darker elements, some BDSM elements, some non-con elements in here that I am very intrigued how the author is going to pull that off. This is a pretty old book. It is kind of dense, I have heard, but the way that Pam Godwin talks about this book and knowing this influenced her writing, like, I really want to give this a, sh this a shot by the end of the year, and I think it could be a new favorite. I think it could be. Maybe. We'll see. Okay, and the last question is, have you already started planning your reading for the next year? Now, I don't... No, not really. Not really. I don't really... Sometimes I, I'm in phases where I love planning what I'm going to read, and sometimes I'm like just completely mood reading. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't, you know? But I, in general, don't set a ton of reading goals for the year or reading plans. Some things that are in my mind that I want to consider next year in my reading and even the remaining parts of this year are I want to make sure that I'm finishing series. I think that's something that I'm really not great at is I start a series and then I never finish it. So I want to have that be more of a priority where I am finishing series and not leaving them for years. I need to do a better job of that. I want to do a better job of that. I love reading series and I just want to do better at that one, you know? Another one I want to do is I want to make sure that I am continually trying new authors. I love finding new authors that I love. I love just discovering them and feeling like, oh my gosh, this author makes me so happy and I'm so happy I found them and I can't wait to read their entire backlist. I've had that happen to me recently a lot and I just love it so much. So that's something that I always want to consider in my reading goals is I want to be continuously trying new authors and finding new writers who speak to me and maybe go outside of the norms of what I would typically consider a new author to try. You know what I mean? Another thing that I really want to do is branch out into different subgenres than I usually read. I feel like I stick to like my most popular, most read romance subgenres are obviously historical romance and paranormal romance, fantasy romance, and dark romance. And I want to really go even deeper into dark romance. I would also really like to find more paranormal romance authors that are newer. I would really love to find more indie historical romance authors because I think that is hopefully an untapped reservoir of writing greatness out there. But I would also really kind of like to try more romantic suspense. I think I could really get into that. But also I think maybe like some I don't even know how to say this, like small town romances. I think that those are kind of appealing to me more right now, and I'd really like to try and read more of those because I don't read those hardly ever. So those are a few that I'm kind of looking for. Um, maybe I'll even give Reverse Harem a try. I don't know. I want to try more subgenres instead of just being like, nope, this is what I read. This is all I'm going to read. I'm just going to stay in this little circle. So I want to try and branch out into different romantic subgenres. So those are uh, those are just a few goals that I have on my radar, but we'll see. We'll see what happens next year. I don't know. It's kind of, it's coming. 2022 is almost here, but it also sort of feels like it's a little far away. So anyway, that is the end of year book tag. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was really fun going through my books and my goals and what I've read and what I want to read. And I hope you enjoyed it too. Please let me know if any of these books that I've talked about, you feel like I should definitely prioritize. I would love to know that. And if you'd just like to leave an emoji here for me, please feel free to leave a doggo emoji for Kazi. Kazi, come here. Oh, he's so sweet, Bea. 
Cause you do just get a haircut. Can we say goodbye to the people? Oh, so sweet people. Eh? <laughs> you get a snoot. That's all you get. Thanks so much for watching, my friends. I'll see you in my next video. I love you. I love you. Yeah.